Okay, hi everyone and good evening everybody. So up to now we have discussed uh, many different types of marine ecosystems and how they are important and major issues in that uh, each and every marine ecosystem. Uh, most of the ecosystem that you discuss uh, as presentations, right? Other than that, uh, uh, we're going through a little bit more detail on the coral reefs as well, right? So today we are going to talk a little bit on um, the major environmental issues in the marine environment, mainly the the main ecological, right? That the main issues that affect the ecology of marine environment, right? So it's very hard to distinguish like so the the impacts of coral reefs, impacts of the um, the mangroves or the seagrass beds, we can consider separately, but uh, all these issues at the end, actually, uh, there are few common issues that affecting the marine environment. So let's discuss uh, in general terms, uh, <clears throat> so what are the main issues? But before that, how well are we doing in, with the marine environment, right? So we talk about the Sri Lanka as one of the biological diversity, right? So we call it as a very diverse and it's a hotspot and it's a tropical island. And we can, we, we call that the, the lot of tourists coming in because of this diversity, but all this may be true, but uh, how well are we doing in the, the, in the marine environment, right? So just to get an, an idea, this is the, there is something called the, the ranking system uh, for the world oceans for each and every country. And Sri Lanka has ranked 146th position in terms of overall ocean health index, right? called the OHI or the o Ocean Health Index. Um, it's based on many number of uh, parameters. So that parameters mainly include like here. This is the, the overall, the score that got from 100. We have scored 63. And how it's, the 63 come from like, like for the food provision, artisanal fishing opportunities, like natural products, carbon storage, like biodiversity. You see the biodiversity, of course, very high. That's why it's actually 93 out of 100. But some scores are very low as uh, you know, some of the, uh, uh, even food provision is less than 50%. So, and at the end, we have a, like a top, not in the top, we are in the bottom in the ladder uh, in terms of uh, the ocean health index, which means our ocean is not very healthy, right? Why it is not healthy? There are many reasons, right? You can give hundreds of reasons why the, the our ocean is not healthy. Um, but um, in here, you will see, uh, some of the um, reasons why it is not healthy in, a, in this diagram, or we can go through later on, uh, but we will go one by one, like uh, what are the major issues with the marine environment? Right? So I have listed some of these. Uh, so if you take them as sort of a hierarchy, like what is affecting the most, um, there's no doubt the overexploitation, I mean, mainly in terms of the fisheries is the main issue, right? We are taking too many fish out of the ocean and uh, that is one of the major reasons. From that, another main issue is marine debris and also some marine dead zones is not really a, a top in the ladder, but uh, these are some listed on the UNDP, one of the publication they have listed in the NG notion. These are the major issues like the nutrient, uh, the high temperature, 
that's we talk about last week the, that's affecting the coral reef uh, the high temperatures or the heat waves the ocean acidification also to some extent but uh, the impact is seems a bit low and it is slow right uh, and impact on marine fauna the shipping and ballast water you see the red colors are the nutrient the high temperatures shipping and ballast water related uh, species innovation so these are going to be a major issues as per the UNDP but other than that the over exploitation and marine debris these are the key issues that you, we will observe in the marine environment right so I don't want to go through the mainly on the fisheries because we have already taught a lot on the fisheries um, even last semester we discussed uh, many things about the fisheries so I don't want to go back um, you have a better understanding about the the major issues with the fisheries and how would be the fisheries in the future and um, what are there are so many different illegal banned fisheries and then uh, but uh, <clears throat> but then what is the solution for fisheries is we know that uh, the the capture fishery is not going to be a solution for the future so then we have to go for culture fisheries so we have to culture them maybe in the the coastal zone or else you have to go for marine culture that culture in fish in the marine environment um, so now the question is whether it is possible um, um, one thing is the how does it affect the the ecology of the the or the marine biodiversity but if you start culturing fish in the ocean that will definitely directly affect the marine environment and we have to put a lot of uh, uh, provide food some maybe chemicals for the fish and that all will affect the marine environment as well right and how we are going to feed the the but anyway we have to feed the people we need the protein source as well so so this is going to be a huge issue that we need have to deal maybe in another five years ten years time uh, the the scarcity of food is going to be a huge issue and then sources of protein then uh, if capture fisher is not going to happen then we have to go for culture fisheries right so <clears throat> as you would see from the uh, the trend in the future it's for going for aquaculture more culture based fisheries and the the capture bay fisheries is in a sort of a declining phase so um that is the challenge that we have for the future which you might have to deal with as the the graduates now but uh, you will be involved in the the managing resources in the future which you have to deal with right so and the, this is the situation 2012 the almost 50 50 capture and culture fisheries by sea by 2030 uh, about 62 percent of the the catch will become from a culture fisheries not from the capture right so how can we cope with this trend in the world how can put this one into sri lanka so that will be really a challenge that uh, we need to think of right so I hope you got an idea from that. And then the other, other thing is the, the, the issue is the plastic. The, the first one we talk about the overexploitation that how affect that. The second one is the, the material use, the plastic. Another huge issue that we are expecting, uh, or we are already having. And you see the, the material used over the time from stone age right where they use the stone then the the bronze age then the iron age and we have come to a plastic age i mean this is the material used right so the plastic has become the the main material in the right so maybe in the future maybe in other hundreds or 500 years time so the today's generation or we will be named as the future generations as the plastic era right so we were in the the plastic era in the in terms of material use right so how does a, this plastic 
uh, cause problem in the marine environment. I think we have discussed many and you have very good understanding as well. So I don't want to go into detail, but uh, uh, almost all the ecosystems in the in the marine environment, marine and coastal environments, they are all affected by the this debris. Right? So it's going to be a huge issue. It is a huge issue and it is going to be an even difficult issue that all of us has to deal with in the future. Right? Um, <clears throat> Um, and this, uh, the effect of this plastics being well understood in many cases, right? And how does it affect and the, this uh, garbage patches in some of the oceans, especially in the Pacific Ocean, there are millions of tons of plastic in the ocean as a, a large patch. And then the impact of these plastic, we can't even imagine how it to affect right so you see the 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 plastic the damage that plastic would have uh, and the material would have done in the marine environment right um and almost all the ecosystems are affected by this plastic you see in the megru this is these are the images from the nigambu lagoon uh just in the kadol kelly uh, how it look like right um and this is the uh, the underwater habitats. Uh, some of my own images uh, where we have encountered plastic urea in the coral reefs. You see, right? You see how much the reefs are damaged from these uh, plastics. Right? Even here, uh, it's almost every day. I think you might have seen these images before. You see, uh, area without. Um, Net so the plastic material is much healthier than the other areas, right? And even in the the ocean depths, um, all these four images from the Nigambu uh, coastal zone, you see the 12 meter, 18, 22, 14 meters depth. This is actually a sort of a shipwreck. You see how much uh, plastic materials. These are all abundant. Right, uh, and this is what we have collected, and uh, you see, even the 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 polythene films just in the ocean bottom. We think that they will be floating, but even in the deep oceans, you can, you will see this uh, the plastic, right? Um, and you know this uh, with the plastic, the waste dumping into the ocean. We have come to a fifth position in the world, and then. With that, uh, um, I think we have involved in many uh, kind of work related to plastics. Um, so I don't want to go to this. And some of you have already involved in the, the CSIRO plastic project, uh, which actually we are analyzing these days at these days, so we, which I would be able to share with you some of the findings. Uh, I think some of you already joined as the volunteers in that group as well. But other than that, uh, we have done many surveys on the marine debris, right? And then it's becoming a huge issue for the country. And not only the, the microplastic, but uh, from there to the microplastic, the small plastics, right? The plastic, Macroplastic is a problem when they are break into a small and small pieces. Now, previously we thought that when the plastics breaks into smaller pieces, so they are degrading, but they are not really degrading. Also, they are degrading, but they are not biodegrading. They just break into smaller and smaller pieces. Then, the smaller the size, then they will do more harm as smaller particles where the, the animal can absorb, right? And, uh, and uh, of course, uh, uh, even the small microorganisms can ingest this uh, microplastic and causing harm. I'll, come to, I'll show some slides, right? So uh, this image shows the, the level of uh, 
plastic uh, accumulation in the marine environment, like in some areas, so huge accumulation of plastics. Uh, this is just in front of you see a temple in Trincomalee, uh, close to the town. Uh, you see how much plastic just in the beach, and then this is in the Kuda Valley in uh, close to Matara, uh, Kuda Valley, close to a fishery port. You can see the the how much plastic being accumulation. Like even you clean it, maybe a couple of months time it just look like again like this. One of the the hot pots in Sri Lanka in terms of the plastic, right? So. Um, yes, uh, the Sri Lanka has become, uh, you know, the top five in terms of plastic uh, dumping into the ocean, mismanaged plastic dumping. And this paper actually we published uh, in 2018. And uh, now have become one of the key publication uh, uh, which a lot of people now referring uh, about Sri Lanka. So. That is actually came from one, one of these uh, surveys we done. And you see this uh, plastic, earlier we talked uh, the problem with the ingestion or other form of, but there's another issue with the plastic, that this plastic can serve as a, a vector or pathway for marine organisms to transfer, right? And I think you have heard about something called this ballast water, biofouling, right? And they all happen through the shipping or the aquaculture, something like that. Now see the plastic. All these we've collected in the, in the beaches. Like see how many animals that float on the these plastics. You see, they are live. Even here, they it's live in the bottles. Uh, this one is dead, but uh, all these are live. You know, and now only the scientists have recognized uh, this biofouling. Uh, on plastic as a pathway. Right? Actually, last three days I was in a sort of a global expert committee. In a, we're talking about this uh, the biofouling. What are the pathways? And then, right, it is a, like a top level scientist. And somehow they have invited me, maybe from a, a Indian Ocean. So, actually, they have not even recognized this. Uh, the plastic or the debris as a pathway. So, uh, so we were just, I managed to add this one as one of the pathways. So we will talk this one much more detail in the future, right? Right, the other thing is this microplastic, right? We call this macro problem is microplastics. Now the microplastics everywhere, right? Even in the cosmetics, even toothpaste, some of your, detergents even, right? Um, I don't want to say the commercial names, but a lot of toothpaste, um, your detergents, right? Uh, even the detergent that used for the washing machines, you might see this color, small particles, which means they are microplast or the microbeads. Right? Uh, these are highly used, right? And with, there are so many sources of microplastic, for example, you Washing machine is one of the source of microplastic. You won't even believe that. Car tires, right? The car tires and the road tar, they all these become at the end of uh, microplastic, even paints. Right? Um, um, they all, all can become microplastic, right? So, and you can see Right, some brand names also here, unfortunately, but uh, I mean, you know these things. You might have used these things, right? Um, you see, in the label it says the microbeads, right? The main component of this one is the like polyethylene. Sometimes is mentioned as, which means all these microplastics, right? Right, and you see this uh, small tube of a. Uh, this cleans uh, how much microplastics are there? Just a single tube, right? So, so imagine how much plastic in microplastics. And these uh, other things are the the treatment plants 
waste treatment plants, all these carrying a lot of uh, microplastics, right? Um, city dust, the road marks or the paints that using the, the crossings or the, the line markings, all these contain microplastics to the ship coating or the paints, a lot of personal care products, tires, synthetic textiles, uh, plastic pellets or the, the, the raw material for plastic, plastic manufacturing. All these become at the end of microplastics and you see the, the microplastic has been ingested by a lot of microorganisms, including zooplankton. And zooplankton get this microplastic at the end of fish larvae. And this is one of the research we've done, one of some of our students, uh, even in the fish gut, a lot of microplastics, right? And now very recently it's found that uh, every of us, right, every individual eat about a, a credit card size uh, microplastics, right? Um, Annually, right? So imagine how much uh, microplastic will be accumulating in our bodies, right? There are a lot of other harmful effects of microplastic, which I don't want to go through these like different microplastics here. Um, and see, we worked with some of the fish tissues. They also have some microplastic. I mean, we use this the spectrum to analyze the microplastic since it's so difficult to find them among the tissues. So this is polyethylene. Likewise, uh, like most of the material, even the salt now known to have some microplastic, like so they, I think we can't even imagine what to be the future. How would be the impact of this microplastic for the future, right? I hope you got uh, some insight on this microplastic from that. The high temperatures, how would affect the marine environment? As I mentioned before, the, the high temperature immediately impact on the coral reefs in particular, as we discussed last week, because the coral polyp and the symbiotic zooxanthellae, this relationship, the symbiotic relationship is um, disturbed by the temperature and salinity changes or the, the other chemical or physical cues, right? So this heat will definitely cause a lot of problems in the coral reefs. And at the same time, the, the other incident is the ocean acidification that we are expecting. That's with the ocean acidification, we are expecting lots of ecological changes, right? Um, like the, the, that the ocean acidification is the ocean chemistry changes with time. And um, you see more bicarbonate, so hydrogen ions more. Uh, once bicarbonate, they break into carbonate and hydrogen ions, and there will be more hydrogen ions, which means more acidic, right? So, which means we will see more organisms like the crustacean without shells. Or well, some might think, oh, that's much better. You can eat them without shells. Right, but the shells are important for that's the 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 outer covering for protection that they are needed. Right, the other direct effect is from from ocean acidification, the coral reefs, because they are um, carbonate structures. The calcium carbonate, the acidic waters will be corrosive for the calcium carbonate, which means the the coral reefs start decay with your acidic waters, right? So the coral reef will be the immediate impact on the uh, ocean acidification as the, the, you can imagine now coral reefs are already dying. <clears throat> if you add the, the higher pH, sorry, lower pH, which means more acidic, and that will cause even accelerate the, the coral decline, right, you see? Um, so it's going to be a serious issue in the future. And as we discussed last week for under the coral reef, you see now these reefs are being converted into this 
algal reef. I talked to you this about this. Like this is a stable community, another stable community, right? One stable community converted into a another stable community. It's called the phase shift. So it's sort of a ecological transformation. One ecosystem transform into another ecosystem, right? So this is marine ecology actually. Right. We just talk about these different ecosystems, but if you put everything together, this is the real ecology and you can think of. And in your lifetime, I think you have to deal with these issues in the future, right? So I think you have to have a very good understanding on these issues. All right, uh, so we talk about this bleaching uh, due to the, the many different phenomena from the heat, to salinity or sedimentation, all this effect on the coral reefs, right? So I don't want to go into detail. Um, so definitely our reefs are disappearing and we talk about these things last week. So they are dying almost, right? Um, so <clears throat> from this to uh, another, um, Another issue is this eutrophication, right? The previous, we talk about this eutrophication uh, the, with the nutrition enrichment, especially in the Indian Ocean that we, we are in, in the Indian Ocean, where the, the Indian Ocean is covered with or the, surrounded by many agricultural countries. And that will end up in, uh, huge accumulation of nutrients in the Indian Ocean in the future. And, then, and nutrients means more plankton growth. More plankton growth means there will be algal blooms. When the bloom conditions, there will be a the reduction in oxygen. We call the low oxygenated areas. And at the end, we will have this phenomenon called marine hypoxia low oxygen in the, some of the areas in the marine environment, right? So we call the hypoxia, or sometimes can be very low oxygen. So no oxygen, we call anoxia. No, any oxygen, which means only anaerobic animals can survive, right? Already there have been a lot of uh, evidences throughout the world, and we are finding this areas called dead zones because of this either um, hy hy uh, hypoxia, right? This is not hyoxia, it's a hypoxia. And anoxia is due to these seasons and we are expecting more and more uh, dead zones in the marine environment, right? Um, and here you see some areas Right, and there are increasing evidences for this uh, dead zones around the globe in the oceans, right? So that'll be a huge issue that we can expect for the future, right? In the Indian Ocean, we even around Sri Lanka, you see in the, some lagoons, we experience some of these mass fish kills. So that's supposed to be due to this, um, the hypoxia, right? So that is something that I do. So if, if it is a hypoxia, you see the, how the ecology will change in the any coastal or marine ecosystem, right? So you can imagine how it would be, right? Now, in terms of ecology, uh, another greater issue come from marine invasions. Right, Sri Lanka, you know, we are in the, uh, uh, we are very close to a shipping route and uh, Sri Lanka well known for a, like a, uh, a node or a hub uh, for the east-west uh, um, ship traffic where so Sri Lanka has high risk of uh, getting invasive species. Uh, mainly from the ballast water as well as biofouling. And uh, you see, this is a, some of the images 
from the ships, how they can be invaded by this invasive species. They can be very harmful, like you see in the propeller. They can attach to even to a propeller that's rotating very high speed with a lot of resistance, but they can even withstand this, right, this, uh, the intake pipes. You can see how they are clogged, right? And even the, the ship's hull or the body. You see, <clears throat> if the ship's body is like this, the, the foil, fuel efficiency is going to be reduced substantially. And which means they use a lot of fuel than usual. Right? So then they have to clean. These ships have to be cleaned time to time to get rid of this uh, um, foul, right? And, and uh, these are the ballast water, right? So another pathway of uh, uh, invasive space is spreading. Um, <clears throat> and the, when the ballast water discharge in the, right, you know, the, how you, the ship use the ballast water, uh, uh, you know, in a, a sh if you are in a boat, you know, you have to, the, usually the boatman, you will be move around to balance the boat. You know? But uh, in the huge ships, several hundred meters length and you can't do anything. And uh, only the way the balancing is like, there are all the ships are now double hull. There are two hulls and in between there are tanks where you can fill water. Right, so how the ship is balanced is the filling water or removing water from one side or another, different ballast water around the, the, the ship, right? So how they are balanced. So when they fill a lot of cargo, they remove all the ballast, right? When it is empty, you have to fully fill the ballast water tanks to keep the stability, right? So during this process, the the water from one area will be taken into another area or from that area will be taken to here. And that is a, a pathway where the invasive species can uh, transport by maybe a larval stages or spores or different, many different forms. Or otherwise they will get attached to this, the ship's hull and they can move around, right? So uh, this is, about the biofoul in the biofoul the accumulation of macro or microorganism on the surface which may have exposed to it right and you see uh, the type of damage that this biofoul can cause in a ship right you see so you won't usually see this because it's underwater <clears throat> but uh, can be really harmful sometimes right um, Right, just talk about the <clears throat> biofouling and we don't want to go into that detail, but uh, there are many different organisms. So macrofouling, microfouling, just like uh, uh, even bacteria can fouling, but we usually talk about the, the fouling by larger species like barnacles, tube worms, mussels, the sponges, the cedians, uh, tube worms like that. So that is we call the, the, the macrofouling. Right, so these are the major pathways from fisheries for fishing boats, the aquaculture structures, the renewable energy, like in the marine renewable energy, the tourism, maybe sometimes an offshore oil, uh, shipping, and the deep sea mining. All these are considered as some sort of pathways of a uh, biofouling. So look at this one, the ship, how it's been bio, so impacted by the biofouling. Right. So this is underneath the ship. Uh, here you see a, a ship in a dockyard. Now, right. dockyard So every ship, time to time, they have to clean like this because they will be. Uh, badly impacted from biofouling otherwise, right? You see the propellers to other inlet all can be affected by this biofouling, right? And you see this, uh, it's not only the 
um, large vessels, but even the shipping vessels, all these can carry a fouling organisms and they, the ships move around. They can go far areas and they can be infected by someone else's shipping boats. Some invasive species can contaminate here and then they can come back to uh, our waters, right? And this aquaculture farm, right? And then they also behave as a sort of a vector, right? So they're not moving, so they're not really part there, but they are a vector. They can hold these uh, invasive ones and then spread some miles into nearby environment, right? Uh, all other marine structures, they all can serve as the, like this, the, the offshore oil and gas rigs, right? Um, you see all these can uh, act as the uh, vectors or pathways for these uh, invasive species, right? and ocean renewable energy structures like this, right? Um, so you might think this is not a problem for Sri Lanka, but uh, there is a fan plan near future that we are going to have this kind of offshore wind farms, just like in the Manar wind farm we will have, and then they will be also infected from this uh, biofoul, right? And, um, the renewable energy structures, waves and tides, right? All these uh, can act as the, right. <clears throat> so what would be the damage? You see, in this, these are some of the images we took in the Colombo port, uh, like a type of damage that they are causing. Um, you see, these species, they are called as a globally non-invasive species that we found in the Colombo port, right? There are more than 15 species, globally known species now we have recorded actually, they have very high potential. Like these animals, you see, you might not even heard about this. There's a family, it's called Bryozoan. I don't think even zoologists, you might not have heard about this. Family name called Brazos, but we we recorded them first time in the the history uh, in Sri Lanka in our port, especially this this Sopora Irata and the water Sopora Saptokota. They all these are Brazos, but they are highly invasive uh, species that can cause a lot of damages in the future. Even the some chordates like uh, acidians like here. They can be attached to the, the the surfaces, and they can serve as the fouling organism. Right? You can see uh, some of my students worked on this biofouling for several years now. We have doing a lot of work on biofouling for nearly last decade, I think. Uh, we have recorded all these in, uh, species. Uh, some of these red colored ones are a globally non invasive species, which can cause a lot of issues in the future, right? So that the ecology will be totally different if you got this kind of a huge infection from uh, this kind of a biofouling organism, right? So this is, this will be a, a huge issue for the future, what you call this, uh, marine bioinvasion, right? So we were expecting huge issues for the future. All right, uh, then from that to other ecological impacts will be from the oil and gas explorations. Well, the explorations, so this is an, an example of uh, the, the last oil exploration we had in Gulf of Mana. Uh, this is the ship that uh, the company used for this uh, exploration. Uh, it's called Chikyu, a uh, Japanese vessel. Uh, these are actually live images we took, right? You can see it's me here. So I had the chance to go into this uh, ship while they are doing this exploration. Uh, we were in the, the environmental impact monitoring team. Right, uh, what are the, issue with this because um, 
the soil exploration actually you have to dig into a very deep ocean layers it's not here like only start the digging only from here it might go for several kilometers down the 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 sea bottom for exploring the oil right so that will collect a lot of sediments from the bottom that will harm the anim marine animals but more than that the biggest issue from the oil exploration is actually they use this seismic survey they use some radar signal um, for this uh, uh, mainly the the pre drilling process like to understand what kind of a, the bottom habitat bottom uh, what kind of a soils in the bottom and then to explore for any petroleum so this uh, um, um, radar going to cause a lot of damages or at least impact on the marine organisms so especially the whales and the dolphins who communicate using the radar will be affected from this exploration right and another thing is the the as i mentioned before the sri lanka is right in the the east west shipping we call the highway right there's a shipping highway here right because from the arabic region all the oil oil to the the east is going through sri lanka just below sri lanka right so that the last uh, the oil thing happened because the oil tanker from here from abu dhabi was went to the india this side they had to go around sri lanka and that's where they got uh, they made some here when they go around sri lanka right so this location sri lanka in the indian ocean you see in a given period of time in a, in a, this is a snapshot uh, of a indian ocean photo ekak gathama ekka velawaka thiyena nav gana balanna if we have the shipping traffic around sri lanka in one moment so these are this is the the highway and this is these are the ships going to the indian side because the larger vessels they can't cross here because of the shallow nets then they have to go around sri lanka to the other side of india right so it's a long way but there's no other way as well right right now the this uh, since we are in the shipping highway sri lanka has very high risk so we have been telling to the the authorities for long period of time but uh, they are very lethargic they are not taking uh, uh, strong measures for this you know there can be any time there can be oil uh, and damage there has been some interventions but we are not doing very good and that was very evident from the the very recently you know this uh, the this is not a mess actually empty new diamond that is the the ship got fired very recently and containing somewhere 270000 metric tons of crude oil right so imagine if this any disaster happened right so the you can't even imagine what kind of thing would happen right um but somehow we just managed to uh minimize the damage but uh, they had to even use some chemicals like this dcp this the dry chemical powder you might have seen some uh, the sri lanka near post people they are some dropping some uh, small bags like things like this actually this dry chemicals uh, distinguishes actually instead of a uh, water or carbon dioxide they use some chemicals uh, as a uh, packets uh, to it is being actually successful some to some extent right um <clears throat> here you see the the same ship right uh, so if something went wrong in the oil then the whole ecology will be impacted in sri lanka right uh, because we have very sensitive coastal ecosystems everything will be affected if something goes wrong right so 
we need to have well prepared for any kind of oil spill because we are in the right in the uh, shipping route, right? Um, and we don't have any excuses. I mean, we have been a shipping nation. I mean, for even in the very first, the, the world map, the Ptolemy uh, drone and if the Sri Lanka was there because Sri Lanka was well known as a, a hub in the, the, in the maritime shipping road, but uh, we haven't done any much to protect our marine environment for this kind of a disaster, right? We don't, we don't know when it's going to happen, right? You know, it's all accidents, right? Uh, even the, the rich nations like America had to go through this kind of a huge oil spill. I mean, even they couldn't really, it is so difficult to control. So you can't even imagine if something goes wrong for us. Uh, because we are not well prepared for that thing, right? <clears throat> so now the other things. Now we've been talking about the oils, right? We think that the it's the the oil from the tankers or ships is really affecting the marine environment. So look at what is the main source of oil. Can someone tell me? Nidid right? Uh, can anyone tell me what is the main source of oil into the marine environment? Okay, tell me someone. Hmm? Sir, from ships. Okay, ships. Anyone else? Anyone has another idea? Right. Um, that's, I mean, everybody thinks that when we are talking about the oils into the marine environment, we think that it's the ships adding a lot of uh, oil into the marine environment. But look at this graph. Right. You see, the main source of oil is actually not ocean based, but just river runoff. That's the oil come from the, your form, maybe from your home, from your, uh, service station or the oil using maybe factories, right? Um, look at this offshore oil production, like the oil production sites is the lowest. The tank accidents still low, but maybe from tank operations, not from the accidents actually. Even atmospheric fall down, like anything that you burn, and we'll be come back to the aquatic energy. So there are many sources of oil, but this oil affect the marine organisms directly and indirectly. Right? So directly, there are many. Now these are some of the case, right? Uh, this is the oil traffic. Like you see, the one Sri Lanka. This is. The, the amount of oil transporting. You see, we are in the, the highway. You see, the highest oil transport is through this route, across to Sri Lanka. And the second one is this one, you see, from this area to the, the uh, Soviet Russia, or the other, the, England and Soviet Russia, the Northern Europe, right? So that's where you see some of the cases that happen in the world. I right? see, so not this uh, actually uh, in the Sri Lanka is nearly happened. This one, this is in the Exxon Valdez, uh, one of the greatest oil spills in the history. Uh, I don't remember the, exactly the days, nineteen. 80s or 60s, I forget it. And this is another, like, uh, close to Norway, um, Korea, I think. One of the oil carrier just break into two suddenly. And there is no any solution. Uh, you can't do anything. And you see, uh, then burning thereafter, just ship break into two pieces. And then all the oil, everything was in the sea. Right, so these kind of incidents are 
has happened a couple of times in the world. Uh, so anyway, it can happen because most of the oil carriers, they make even these, the diamond, this 20 years old, right? So most of the ships are like that. They, can, they are very old. Just like even now the planes are in Sri Lanka, we have, they are 15, 20 years old now, right? Um, right. So if oil spill happen, there are many diff, um, many things we can do, like using some booms, like like this, right? There are many different things you can do. You can uh, either um, like absorb some of the things, right? Using a skimmers, something like uh, like a sponge like thing. You can put it in and then you get some oil collected and you know, easily you can separate from the water and you can reuse the oil. Or otherwise you can use a boom, like a stop oil spreading like this. You, otherwise you can use some oil, it's called the sorbent. Uh, to absorb oil, or uh, sometimes they use the dispersing agents. Like you know, in this, there is no way of uh, like even after absorbing, there's still something left. So they use something called dispersion or dispersing agents. Just like the oil break into small pieces and then which uh, make it easier for the microbes to digester is right and otherwise they use chilling agents like it's make a gel like where they can collect them and sometimes use the biological agents there are some oil eating bacteria and other microbes you can use them or mechanical washing you can like you can use some areas like this wash like right? so these are uh, there are many uh, things that you can do but only the thing uh, you need to have a lot of preparation for these things. That's the thing, um, like something goes wrong, you have to get some of these devices from India. Even this case, you have to get some stuff from India for the, uh, if something goes wrong. But uh, of course, definitely we need to have prepared for this kind of a situation because uh, it kept, can happen anywhere, anytime any moment there is a risk, right? So imagine if this kind of oil spill happen around the port in the Colombo, right? So that will be the end of the everything, like you have to close down the port and if the port has to close for more than one or two weeks, you won't have anything to eat even, right? And of course we have to rely on many things on the import, right? So um, so how these oil impact, right? There are many different ways. They are highly toxic or otherwise, you know, the birds, like marine mammals, their skin will be covered by like aquatic birds. If they dig into the water, then they are, the, the feathers will be covered with them and they will be able to fly. Right? You might have seen in the video with the oil, they don't know the soil, they just will dive you into the water and then with the oil, they won't be able to swim, uh, fly anymore, right? So sometimes the volunteers have to like uh, wash them. The birds collect them and wash them if they if they to, to fly again, right? So it's going to be a huge disaster. On the other hand, if it is hit on a coral reef or a mangrove, right, you will need a millions of people to clean up a mangrove or something, or it will take several days, months, two years to clean up, right? But it's still the toxic thing, you can't even imagine. If there are some immediate impact, the short-term impact as well, long-term impact, even the like some toxic material, it will cause some genetic variations in the animal, right? Likewise, so, the impact of oil you can't even imagine, right? So, so it's that dangerous if some oil spill happen around anywhere. And so that's where I need a lot of uh, preparedness for in this kind of a disaster, which can happen anytime, right? Um, <clears throat> all right. Uh, any questions so far? 
I'm not too sure the people are still here. I can still see some 34, right? Um, anyone has any questions or comments? Right? What the Kataka and the Kanama, then back a Kadikata, right? No questions, no comments. Right? If need, you should have some questions. In the meantime, I will check for the LMS if it's back. No, it is not. Uh, it says error reading from database. Um, I think maybe the LMS, the the system may be down in the university. <clears throat> All right, so that's a little bit about the, the, the type of issues that we have or that type of issue that we would have in the future, right? So um, you can... Uh, 